let's see, um, some I got from a subscriber, it said, Flubble Stephanie Incorporated, you say that your videos are you there to help people, but guess what, your videos suck and you suck. Um, is that supposed to mean something? Um, I'm sorry, am I missing something? Please, somebody, just, just tell me, am I missing something? Hey guys, this is Global Stuff Incorporated, and I'm back with another deck profile video. And this is requested by one of my subscribers named Mansour Herbin, I think it's pronounced. I mean, I could be wrong, and if, if I'm wrong, they're going to pronounce me. Well, correct me, sorry. Anyway, he requested a pure Infernity deck. I mean, it's kind of pure. I mean, this is another variant I wanted to try out. And it's working out very well. So, he wanted to know if Infernities can top. I mean, it's kind of like asking, to a lesser extent, if Synchrons can top. I mean, they're very well capable of doing it, but the thing about it is that any floodgate that can come across them, and it, they pretty much struck a brick wall where other players around them, like Fluffles, could. That being said, I feel like the Infernities would do pretty well, I guess. I mean, they're not the most, they're not the most consistent deck out there if you brick a lot, but they're definitely one of the most respectable if you know, if you actually get them to work. <laughs> so that being said, let's get to the deck profile. Now one Infernity Archfiend because you only run one, and he's a searcher, he's the heart and soul of the deck. Then there's two Dark Reffer to send more darts from your deck to the graveyard. Then there's two Stygian Street Patrol, because you get to summon a Fiend from your deck with 2,000 or less attack points from your hand, so that's great. Really love it. And there's one Archfiend Harris, just so you can search Infernity Archfiend, which is very nice at times. Then there's three Infernity Necromancer, because he's your monster reborn of the deck. Then there's three Infernity Beetle, because he's the best tuner in the deck. You know, you just tribute it, get two Infernity Beetles, and start your Synchro Plays. Then there's one Infernity Avenger, because you're, because he's a level 1 tuner of the deck. Not too bad, not too great. And lastly, to round up the monsters, two Infernity Mirage, just because he can bring back two Infernity monsters from your grave, and is your main target for 100 Eyes Dragon, which I will get to soon. Now for the spells, one 1 for 1 to get to Mirage as quickly as possible. Then there's two Zero Max, because you can get back an Infernity from your graveyard. But here's a quick note for you guys. It destroys any lower any attack monster with attack points lower than the monster you summoned. That being said, if you summon Archfiend and there are weaker monsters, and it'll get rid of the monsters, but it'll make Archfiend miss the timing. So I'd recommend to probably bring back a Necromancer or something. Or if you have a clear board, get back Archfiend. You know, just something along those lines. So one if one last start goblin because 39 card deck. Then there's Foolish Burial to send any monster you to the graveyard aside from Dark Graffer, because Dark Graffer kind of needs to be in the main deck. Then there's three into the void because, you know, it's your draw power of the deck and it wipes out your hand in the end phase. So it gets you your resources and gives you what you want. So it's a win win. Then there's three pause duality because it digs through your deck and allows you to add a card from you to your hand. You know, I'm on the top three that you got. So yeah, the card's very great because you can pull any of your resources you may need. Also, it's a good first turn opening card, so Pod Duality is excellent. Then there's one Infernity Launcher because, you know, it's the best spell on the deck. You know, it gets you back to Infernities and allows you to drop an Infernity if you need to. Moving on to the trap cards, three Infernity Inferno because it's your massive, a massive foolish burial for the deck, which is why I need three of it. Then there's one bottomless trap hole because, you know, it's bottomless. It just gets rid of big threats. Then there's three reckless greed because you know you draw two and skip your next draw phases. Allows you get more fodder for your Inverni Inferno and also allows you to get you more of your resources. Then there's three Infernity Break because with Infernity Break, you know, we get to pop a card of it banishing an Infernity card from your graveyard. So three breaks are always nice. You know, if I if 
barrier was still a three up high, like one or two barriers. There's one called the Haunted because it can be get back a monster from your grave, like an Archfiend, to search again. Then there's one Infinity Barrier because you can only run one. Then lastly, Solemn Warning because it stops summons and inherent summons as well. Now moving on to the Esther deck, one Trilla Dragon is the Ice Barrier because it's, it's the best rank 9 out there, as well as what I believe to be the best synchro out there. Then there's one Beatles because, you know, it's your wall of the deck if, in case you ever needed it. Then there's one Void Ogre Dragon because the Dark Bribe on legs. Then there's 300 Eye Dragon because it, this is the guy that makes your loops happen. I mean, if you banish Infernity Mirage, you gain its effect, you contribute it, get back probably Necromancer and Archfiend to start searching and summoning again. So, Infernity, is sorry, 100 Eyes Dragon is great at 3. There's one Infernity Doom Dragon because he's a beat stick, and also he's a standing target for any of my Infernity cards. So, Infernity Doom Dragon at 1 is just fine. You don't need multiples. There's two backs of the Uprightness of the Yang Zing, and two Manifest Horus. Because of Manifest Horus, you're going to get a face-up card when being summoned. It's generic. A generic Worm Synchro, which is perfect for Baxia, because with Baxia, you can spend cards, and at the cost of sending a card in your side of the field to the grave, you can summon one level 4 lower monster from your grave, like Infernity, Archfiend, to search again, Necromancer to summon an Infernity from your graveyard, so... Yeah, two Baxia and two Manifest Horus is just fine for me. Then there's one Armadius Keeper of Boundaries, because I need a target just in case I can get, like, Necromancer and Beetle out and just go for Armadius. You know, it's more generic than Stygian Sergeant, so, yeah. Then moving on to the Xyz Monsters, one, number 38, because, you know, if you can have, like, two Baxias is sitting there, you can just overlay them for 38, which adds more to the lockdown strategy Infernity can get after they go off. Then lastly, two Levier of the Sea Dragon, because if you detach... You can get back one banished monster from your, uh, well, one banished monster at low, low level, like, Mirage to get back, you know, like, get back, like, Inverted Archfiend or Necromancer to start searching and summoning again. So, Levier is great if you use, like, two Necromancers, and it's the ideal target for Baxia. So, I hope you guys like this deck profile video, guys. And if you guys like this video, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. So, talk to you guys next time. Fluffle stuffing. Only real men play fluffles. <laughs>